Hey friends, welcome back to another What's For Dinner video. If you're new here, my name is Hannah. I upload twice a week on Thursdays and Saturdays, What's For Dinner videos, grocery hauls, shop with me videos, all that sort of lifestyle thing. So if you enjoy that, please subscribe down below and stick around so you don't miss any of the other videos on my channel. This week we are making three meals together to give you inspiration for your dinners at home. And they are steak and potatoes, a garlic noodle recipe that's actually a Vietnamese recipe, and a sloppy joe tater tot casserole. So these all are really great and I hope you stick around to watch all three of them. Let's get cooking. This first recipe that we're making together is a red wine steak marinade. So this is super easy. All you have to do is marinate the steak in the combination of these things, leave it in the fridge for two hours or up to overnight, and then cook your steak how you want it. I'm also gonna make some baked potatoes and some broccoli uh, to go on the side of these steaks. First, we are going to add one cup of this red wine. So we just got the Merlot, the oak leaf Merlot from Walmart. So cheap wine for this is fine. It's just for the marinade, so it doesn't matter how expensive it is. One cup of red wine. One tablespoon of soy sauce or coconut aminos. Fourth cup of olive oil. One teaspoon of onion powder. One teaspoon of salt. The recipe calls for kosher salt, but I don't feel like getting that out of their cabin. I mean, the, the cabin. The pantry. <laughs> so regular salt is fine too. One teaspoon of pepper. And two teaspoons of minced garlic. Give this all a good whisk. Just dump this marinade into the bag with the steaks. They are in the bag. Give these a good shake. Massage them around. And then they will go in the fridge for at least two hours up to overnight. And I'm gonna put a pan under this just in case the bag breaks. I don't want to mess all over the refrigerator. And then that'll be it till dinner. It's about two o'clock now. So we normally eat around six or so. Um, so these will have at least four hours to marinate in the fridge. And I'll make the baked potatoes and the broccoli before we eat dinner tonight. See you then. It's been about four hours. We've got our meat here ready to go. I'm going to make some broccoli and potatoes to go with it. So the broccoli, I'm just going to cut up and toss with some olive oil and some seasoning. Some Kinder's buttery steakhouse seasoning. We get this at Costco and we love it. It makes vegetables taste great. Definitely highly recommend this one. Toss that with olive oil and the seasoning and then bake it at 375 just until the broccoli is done. Probably around 15 to 20 minutes. going to make some potatoes to go with our steak so I've already scrubbed these and I'm just gonna throw them in the microwave since 
we're gonna eat probably in like a half an hour and I don't wanna wait an hour for these in the oven. So I'm just gonna prick them with a fork, throw them on a plate and put them in the microwave for probably 10 minutes. They're different sizes, so I may have to pull the smaller ones out a little sooner, but around 10 minutes generally. Here's how they turned out. They just came out of the oven. And I like to cook them like this because look at all this, how brown and crispy they are. Oh yeah, that is the stuff right there. We are ready to cook the steak. Corey is gonna cook the steak because he normally does that here. I'm not great at steak, so he's gonna cook the steak. Well, <laughs> so we've got the pan heating up. It's on like medium heat, yeah. maybe a little more than medium. A little bit more than medium. Six out of six out of nine. Like... Six out of nine, and we've got some oil in the pan. We'll throw some butter in there too, and let it melt down. Some butter. You'll tell when the oil's hot enough; it'll kind of. Uh... It's weird. If you look at it, it'll spread out. You can shake it around where it coats the pan, and then it'll spread out really quick where it's so. Hot and that's where you want it. That's, that's where you when want you're it. Ready. <laughs> okay, so we'll wait on this to heat up. Okay, he's throwing them in. How do you know it's ready, C? I think, well, I should have waited to put the butter in until I could actually. I always look at the oil and you can tell when it just separates by itself in a pan, you know it's hot enough. But uh, I just threw the butter in this time. I didn't think about it. So it made it harder to read, but you can see light steam coming off of it. So I think it's, I think it's still ready now. If it doesn't, uh, if you don't get that sizzle, then it ain't hot enough. Okay. I'm not one of those ones that throws it on high, like tries to really sear it like some do, but that's all I'm looking for. That's what we're looking for. The sizzle. Yeah, put the steam on it. Good steam. Start a timer. How long on each side, see? It, uh, it varies on the thickness, but uh, kind of trial and error, like, you know, a really thin New York strip, you know, you'll probably do like three and a half minutes a side on medium to high heat, if you want it like medium. Um, something like that, it was, it was a lot thicker, it's probably like that. So I'm gonna go with four and a half a side on a timer. And we'll see what it looks like. You can hear the sizzle, but I wish you could smell it in here. It smells that so is, good. It is. does. I just... I was say, the first time you've done it, the steak, it's going to look a little funny just because it's, I don't know, it's, it's like pinkish red from taking in the red wine, but it smells really good and it is really good. It's going to look weird, but it's good. Yeah. I used to sometimes go in restaurants and wonder like what that smell was. It smelled so good. And after we've cooked a few things with wine, I think I've realized that Probably. it's wine. Yeah, <laughs> it's the wine and the sauce. It smells so good when it cooks and it, oh, it tastes so good too. If you don't like alcohol in your recipes though, if you don't want to cook with alcohol. I think a lot of it probably cooks out. It's just a really yeah. light taste. And I mean, I don't know if you, you think wine, a lot of wine is too strong. If you put it in that, the taste will probably be less than a lot and just be a lot lighter. Yeah, it a lot it's of really light aftertaste. Yeah, a lot of the alcohol cooks out, but if you don't like um, using wine when you cook, I would maybe look for a marinade with uh, Worcestershire sauce in it instead of wine because I've used that marinade before too, a marinade with Worcestershire sauce. And that is also very good. So that's an option if you don't want to use wine. They're out of the pan, but you need to let them rest for a few minutes so they can absorb all of the juices back. And they also keep cooking for a minute after you take them out of the pan. Time for the cut. That's oh, like a, a medium well. That's perfect for me. Well, I guess it looks, it kind of looks medium on there. Yeah, I think that's medium. Oh yeah. Oh, this one Let's try this one. Oh yeah, 
That puppy's medium for sure. Oh yeah. Those are like the perfect medium, I would say. If you want a medium rare, maybe go. Oh, probably that was nine. That was four and a half minutes per side. So I would say, if you want a medium rare, oh, we'll probably do probably just eight minutes. Eight and the total. sevens might be too low, but probably about eight. And if you want well done, we can't help you here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, obviously just increase the time, but we don't ever cook them well done. So I'm not sure exactly how long that would take. These steaks were so good. The flavor from the red wine and all the other ingredients in that marinade are just great together. We really love the taste. And the broccoli was good as always when you roast it like this. I forgot to show you guys our baked potatoes, but I mean, they're just baked potatoes. You get the idea. But this is definitely a great dinner for like a date night. If you're going to have a date night at home or a fancier evening at home, it was great. Highly recommend. This next recipe is for Vietnamese garlic noodles. So this is actually a New York Times recipe that I saw on their website and I just thought that it sounded so good. So I decided we were gonna try it. Um, you start by melting butter in a skillet and then you are going to put all of your garlic in the skillet as well. So this recipe calls for 20 cloves of garlic, which I realize is <laughs> an insane amount of garlic, um, but, it was not overpowering in this recipe. Now, it also calls for fresh garlic, and I am using um, minced garlic from a jar here because honestly, I was just so lazy that night. I did not want to peel 20 cloves of fresh garlic, but I feel like it would be better with the fresh garlic, so if you have the time and the willpower to do that, <laughs> you use fresh garlic instead of the minced kind. You are going to saute your garlic for a couple of minutes. The recipe says just until it's fragrant and not browned, um, but I think garlic is fragrant like almost from the minute you put it in the pan. So I left mine in here for probably two or three minutes and just sauteed it for that long. After you've done that, you are going to add your oyster sauce and your fish sauce to the pan. So the recipe calls for oyster sauce and fish sauce, but we could not find fish sauce in the grocery store this weekend. So I ended up just doubling the amount of oyster sauce. It still tasted really good, but I'm sure that it would be better with the original fish sauce that the recipe calls for. You are also gonna add in your soy sauce at this point and then stir everything around in the pan to combine it and go ahead and take that off of the heat. The recipe also calls for Parmesan cheese. It calls for one ounce, but I had this leftover block of Parmesan. So I just grated the whole thing and put that in there. I probably used about three ounces, I think. While you're grating the Parmesan, you can boil the spaghetti noodles. So you'll need one pound of spaghetti and you'll just boil that according to the package directions. When your spaghetti is done, you will need your tongs because you are going to transfer the spaghetti from the pot into the skillet with the tongs and you're going to let whatever water hangs onto the spaghetti go into the saucepan with the garlic to make your sauce. So you're transferring all of this over, but you also want to save some of the pasta water to thin out your sauce. And I will say I ended up using probably about a cup and a half of pasta water just because the pasta kept soaking up any water that I put in it. So definitely save a good amount of your pasta water because you're going to want that for the sauce. Once you've got all of that spaghetti into the skillet, you want to toss that around with the garlic and the rest of the seasonings in the pan and really coat the noodles. So I made a big mistake here and <laughs> did not get a big enough skillet out. 
and this is a lot of food when you put all the spaghetti in the skillet so definitely use a bigger skillet than I did I ended up transferring this back into the pot because I just didn't have enough room in this little skillet you want to add your Parmesan at this point also so you can incorporate that into the sauce Here's where the pasta water comes in. So I started with this a little bit at a time, adding it in to um, make the sauce more liquid. And you should do the same, but I ended up using all of that water you see there. So it's actually probably closer to two cups. And when I added all that in, it did make like a creamy sauce with the noodles and it was really good. The flavor was really good and I enjoyed the sauce a lot, but it definitely did take a lot of that pasta water. So just keep that in mind and don't throw yours out. Let's give it a taste. It's good. I do like it. I definitely think it would have for sure been better with the actual garlic cloves, the fresh garlic cloves instead of the minced ones, but it's still good. I like the flavor a lot. I do think it would benefit from some salt and some extra cheese, so I'm probably gonna add that in there. Doesn't everything benefit from salt and extra cheese? <laughs> everything. I chopped up some green onions to go on top of this. Actually, I put them on top, but I ended up mixing them in. And that's it. This is ready for dinner. We liked this one a lot, and I will make it again. It has a different flavor profile than a lot of the things I normally cook. So like an Asian flavor profile, I think. And we really liked it. Um, also, you could use gluten-free noodles for this. Of course, if you are gluten-free, um, shout out to Becky. I know she is gluten-free and she watches my videos, so I'm sure this would be just as good if you used gluten-free noodles for this recipe. This next recipe could not be more simple. So this is basically a Sloppy Joe tater tot casserole. So you are going to cook up your hamburger in the skillet and then add your Sloppy Joe sauce then you will put all of that in, into a pan and cover it with a layer of tater tots and a layer of cheese. And then you'll bake that in the oven according to the directions for the tater tots just until the tater tots are cooked. I used a whole bag of tater tots here and my ratios were off just a little bit. So if you only use one pound of meat for this casserole, I would probably use half a bag of tater tots. We definitely didn't mind the extra potatoes, but there were more potatoes than meat uh, when I used the whole bag of tater tots. So if you're using one pound of meat, I would recommend one pound, or I'm sorry, one half a bag of tater tots. Here is that finished casserole. This is perfect for a night when you don't have much time to spend in the kitchen and you don't have a lot of willpower to cook something super elaborate. This tastes good and it's super easy to put together. So that is it for this video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel down below. Give this video a like and tell me how you found the channel. I would love to know. So thank you so much. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.